Hey GarageBand fans, it's Dr. Watson here with another video. This one is just a general overview of GarageBand. Maybe the first time you're using it, you'd be interested in just knowing what the pr um, product looks like and what are some of the um, things you'll see in the user interface. So when you launch GarageBand, you'll get this, um, this window and it has um, new project, which is probably what you're going to be doing. Um, I like to choose empty project, so I start from scratch, but there are a bunch of presets. If you know you're going to work with keyboards or you're going to do some voice recording or you know um, you have some guitars plugged into amps, but um, honestly, I just like to go with empty project. Also down here, if it's not open already, there's a little triangle that shows some um, other things like if you know the tempo of the project or if you want to just take a stab at tap say you don't know the the beats per minute which is what this number is here but you want to you know you know your project's going to go one two three four one two three four tap 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 well it turns out that's 219 beats per minute or say you're going to be doing dum dum da dum 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 well that's about 118 i was actually hoping to get 120 which is march tempo right so you can put your tempo in there if you know what key you're going to be in you can choose the key major or minor and if you want to uh, choose your time signature you can type that in or use these um, arrows um, right now I'm going to just leave it at 44 and then audio input if you're going to be using a mic like right now I'm speaking through a blue snowball microphone so I've chosen that but you know you could choose the internal mic or maybe an audio interface and same thing with the output I'm using the built-in output of my computer but you could use an audio interfaces um, output now say you want to open a project that already exists which I think is actually a good way to show off um, what the user interface looks like. So I'll go to recent and I'll choose a project and then I'll choose the word choose down here or I could just double click on it. If you're going to choose a new project you would say like say empty project and then choose the word choose or again double click on it. But yeah let's let's go ahead and um, I'm going to open up a recent project. I do want to mention these two other things here are um, actually lessons on how to play guitar and piano and you can buy those lessons on the lesson store uh, and download them but that's sort of outside the scope of this video. Alright so recent um, project let me open this one right here I'm going to double click on it there I go and it's going to load it up and um, let me close a few of these windows just so it's not so confusing and um, all right, so what we have here, I'm going to just look at some areas. Like right here, this big center area is called the track window. And in the track window are these colorful things called regions. So every track has a track header, which I'm clicking on different track headers right now. The reason my voice changed um, up here is because I'm monitoring um, effects that are on the... Um, the first track so let me turn that off but anyway this happens to be an audio uh, track header it's a, it's hosting um, a live recording of a flute that was done and here's where the flute comes in let me let me solo that you have a solo button here and you have a, a mute button so I'm going to solo that and you can um, put the track um, the playhead along the the ruler here the timeline and I can either click the play button up here or I can just double click in the the timeline let me just go ahead and hit play and you should hear a flute now Right, so that was actually a, a live flute recorded with a microphone, and, and this track header is the host for this track, which includes that region, but it also includes later on another region, like here's a separate region, right? These are separate regions, here's another region, but blue tells you that it's audio, whereas down here, this track header um, has a green region in it, and green is MIDI data, um, MIDI um, that is played by virtual instruments. Um, down here we see some purple. Well, these track headers are for electric guitars. You can see the amp over here. And so GarageBand has a type of track. Um, actually, let me show you the different types of tracks. You have either MIDI, that's these virtual instruments. You have audio, uh, which could be a microphone or could be um, guitar. And then there's the drummer track. I'll talk about that in a second. But anyway, the purple are the guitar tracks. And then down here, this is the drummer tracks. And it, GarageBand has this really cool feature, um, which is like an artificial intelligence. It makes up drum tracks for you. So you can explore that. Um, I have videos about all these different features like audio recording, MIDI recording. But anyway, I just wanted to explain that this is the track window, the center area. These are track headers, right? They're hosts for different instruments or recording scenarios. And then we have the timeline over here. And if you want to go back to the beginning, you can use this thing here called the transport controls. Let's transport ourselves back to the beginning. Of course, you can also hit the return uh, button. Um, the play button, let's hear a little bit of this. All right, so we hear a guitar, that's audio. And then here comes an organ and a bass, and that's MIDI. All right, 
And there's some tracks down here. Those chimes you're hearing are down here. They're fake. <laughs> They're virtual instruments. And the drummer, right? The drum tracks you're hearing. That's GarageBand's drummer. Okay, and then stop button. And if I wanted to record, I would select what what track I want to record on and hit the record button. Um, so these are the transport controls. Um, let's see, that we talked about this, um, uh, I, I don't know if I did talk about it, it's the LCD display and it has things like, you know, where are you in the project? Where's the playhead right now? Let me move the playhead over here. So now I'm on measure four, beat one, right? Um, how many beats per minute is this project? Um, that's the, the metronome and right now we're at 102 beats per minute, but you can change it. Uh, what key are you in? And you can change that. We're in D major. And what's the time signature? We're in 6-8. So this is called the LCD display. Over here, there's um, something you might be interested. I'm displaying in beats right now, but you could also display it in time. So if you wanted to know, like, where does the rock organ come in? It comes in at about five seconds into the project. Or if you want to know how long the project is, let's zoom out. There's a zoom slider here. I'm going to zoom way out. So I can see the whole project is only about 3 minutes and 20 seconds or 25 seconds. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Um, and uh, let's go back to the beginning again. And uh, go, back to um, go back to beats. And um, I like the beats and measures because that shows me you know, how, the, how musicians view uh, projects. Use your you know, measure 9, measure 10. And each measure has has beats inside it. Okay, um, what else do we have? Let's see. Over here is cycle region, which I'm not going to address because I have a whole video on using GarageBand preferences and the cycle region feature. So you can view that. If you have a guitar plugged in, you can tune. Right? There's a tuner. Uh, there's a count off. If you'd like to record, but you'd like to hear a, a click, you know, one measure or two measures of time before you record, like just to get you ready, you can turn the count on, count in. And then there's a metronome, and that's a click track that plays during the recording um, just to keep time. So those are useful too. Um, over here, on the other side of the transport controls, let's go back to uh, one of my MIDI tracks, like this rock organ. So if I click on the library, I can see all the different instrument categories. Let me slide this over. All right, move it over. Okay, so all the different instrument categories, like B3 is, is, is an organ. Uh, rock organ is a specific instrument in the organ category. But I've got synthesizers, pianos. So I have a whole video on, on selecting MIDI instruments and auditioning these. These are software instruments, so just listen to that video or view that video. Um, if it's a audio track like this flute track, then what you'll get are different um, presets for recording scenarios. So that's the library. And then um, the scissors here, if you select a track and want to edit it, you can click on the scissors. It opens up the edit window, and now you can actu actually see the flute um, waveform, and you can you can cut and paste it in audio um, and uh, edit it. Um, let me play again. Notice that the track head down below and the track head up below are not lined up. Well, there's this little tool here. If you click on that, it'll cause the two to come together, and then they'll sort of they'll start playing and scrolling at the same rate. Okay, so that's to keep the playhead up here and the playhead here together. That's what this tool is here. It's like a sweeping tool. Okay, let me close the edit window. Um, there's also the smart control window and that's where you have all your plugins and effects like compression, reverb, and uh, EQ, and you know, there's all sorts of stuff here. Again, I have a video on that. Uh, but that's the smart controls. This is just a help menu. Wherever, If you have this clicked, wherever you float your cursor, you'll see here, right? You'll see that right now I'm floating my cursor over the volume slider, right? So it'll tell you what that is. Or I'm floating my cursor over the play button or the record button and how to use that. So that's, that's kind of handy, but I, I don't use that a whole lot. Um, over on the far um, right, is a bunch of tools. Um, the loop browser is the one you'll probably use the most. You know, you can drag loops into your track window, and um, it'll give you drum beats and you know bass lines and all sorts of other stuff. Um, I have a whole video on loops, but you can check that out. Um, this is notes. If you want to type in you know notes on the project to tell yourself you know what you've been doing, you can keep notes here. It's like a notepad, and then media that you might want to pull in like some something from your iTunes playlist or a movie from your uh, collection of movies. Any, any media you want to pull into a GarageBand project, you can use this as well. Okay, what else? Um, we haven't looked at the menus, but 
they're kind of what you'd expect. Um, GarageBand preferences is important. I have a whole video on what the, the different preferences are, but and they're very useful, by the way. Um, file or things like save and um, uh, open. Uh, edit is where you'd find things like cut, copy, paste, and especially split a region if you want to put a, a split in the middle of a region. Um, there's a track menu for starting a new track, and also there's a whole bunch of um, special tracks that normally don't show, and you can you can hide them if they are showing and you don't want them to show, um, and you can cause them to be shown. Like say you, you want to um, change the tempo of your project, or you want to import a movie, uh, things like that, or change key. There are tracks that allow you to do that. Um, the record menu has the count in, but you know you you have that tool over here as well. Um, mix menu, uh, share menu, if you want to export your song and mix it down. Um, in the window menu there's this neat little um, musical typing it's called and what it is is it's a, uh, a keyboard and you can use your QWERTY keys uh, to trigger that. So might be something to explore. Anyway, um, so what have we got here? We got the, the track window here, we have the track headers over here, we have the timeline here. If you want to play back you can either click in the timeline and your tr your playhead just jumps there, um, or you can double click. Watch this, I'm going to double click right at measure four. Boom. And it just starts playing. You can also use the space bar to start and stop playback as well. Um, I think that's most of the stuff I wanted to talk about. Real quick, I'll just say that on each track header um, are things like a volume slider, a pan pot uh, to set the left right stereo image, um, a solo button and a mute button if you want to just hear uh, the track or if you want to hear everything but the track, right? There's a mute button. And um, oh, one last thing. Um, right now you're viewing the track window with all those regions in it, but if you click on the automation, right, the show automation, you'll see all the fades um, that I have in this project. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, so you can see that I'm doing quite a bit of automation at some places like right here, right? The volume goes up and down and up and down and um, sometimes it's um, like here, it's mostly to shape the sound of uh, that particular flute. Uh, let me zoom in so you can see. The flute right here has a big peak, so I, I, I turn the volume down automatically and then have it come back up so that you don't get assaulted by that peak. So um, let's just watch that. Okay, here comes the big flute. It's pretty soft, right? And then, whoa, come back here. Right, right there. Okay, so because it had such a loud sound there, um, I automated the, um, the volume down. So um, volume automation is cool, and, and you can access that right there. Uh, I have a whole video on that as well. So anyway, that's the user interface. Um, if you're first using GarageBand and wanted to know what some of these buttons and, and tools are, um, hopefully you'll explore some of my other videos to, to dig deeper. But now at least you have the overview. Um, did I show you the zoom? I hope I did. Uh, to zoom in and to zoom out, there's a zoom there. Same thing in the edit window. When you open up the edit window, you can, um, let's put some MIDI data here. Let's zoom in, right? If you want to see more of the track, but say you want to zoom in on something over here, then you could do this, right? You can get a little more detail to see the uh, events. So I'm glad I mentioned that, the zoom thing. I almost forgot to tell you about that, but um, in terms of working with GarageBand, that's something you want to do. Um, maybe one more thing too. Sometimes people don't realize you can resize the window too. So if you're working in a small little GarageBand window, and you have all this space on your desktop, why not use it, right? Why not drag that lower right-hand corner and just use the whole thing? Of course, some people um, would just hit the uh, the green dot up here, and you know that also uh, resizes it to the to the window. So yeah, use your available space too. Just like you can you can move these over the track headers, or you can show all of the track header. Um, Hey, you can even move the track headers up and down. You can change the orders of your tracks too. So anyway, that is the GarageBand um, just overview uh, of, of the, the big picture of what it looks like and, and what are, are all the different uh, user interface tools. Hopefully you'll check out some of the other videos. Good luck.